This is Carbon Mike. You're listening to Dangerous Space. Ever since the Northern Miracle, the Canadian Truckers' Convoy began, we at the Foundationist Society have been thinking about what we could do to help. We watched thousands of working-class people drive across a continent to confront a government that was out of control and out of touch with its own citizens. We thought it would be good to help more of those truckers and the people supporting them to get their voices out. So, a short time ago, we spun up the Convoy Hotline, a toll-free Canada phone number that we patched through to our headquarters in New York so that guys in their trucks, even if they didn't have a Wi-Fi signal, even if they didn't have internet, could still call us and get on the podcast. This week, I got my first call on the Convoy Hotline, a trucker out of Saskatchewan named Spencer Bouts. His trucking handle is Pretty Boy. We talked for about an hour. Yeah, this is Pretty Boy from Saskatchewan. Been rolling with the West crew a couple of days now. Um, currently sitting in front of the Supreme Court, just a couple blocks away from Parliament Hill. So we are in the midst of it. We are in the excitement here, that's for sure. It seems to me that the planning and execution of this thing was really off the hook. I mean, you had guys coming from different parts of the country, and everything seemed to roll very nicely. So did you, you came with part of, as part of a larger crew from your region, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, you betcha. You no, know, I rolled with the main guys here. Uh, Tamara, which started the GoFundMe, she's been one of the main faces there. Uh, and I've been part of the, getting to know the whole crew. Definitely, when you start with the original people and everything like that, it's uh, been a real experience, a real blessing. Um, I'm going to touch on something you said there about the planning. Um, this could be above my head, maybe, but I think the biggest blessing with the planning was that this just came so fast and so hard and grew just exponentially that uh, there was no solid plan. I'm going to be totally honest with you. There was no, there was no uh, three weeks ago, beautiful set out, laid out plan, right? This was pop in, go and make things happen as we go. And did we ever, every town reacted quick, set up churches, set up town halls, got us in there, got us fed and kept us happy as we went. And, you know, it, uh, it was a blessing, like I said, um, because I think if there was a obvious plan three weeks ago, a real cut and dry, it would have been a lot easier to stop us in our tracks before we got going. So That's a good point. Yeah. we gotta, we got to remember that. It was, uh, it was uh, a quick reaction sort of a thing, and that exponential growth was phenomenal. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, speaking of people trying to shut you down, I noticed that, um, that GoFundMe basically cut off your funds, just decide that for some reason y'all were no longer allowed to access the funds you had raised. And then apparently the Ottawa mayor said some nonsense about how you've got to, he, he's going to use that fund to pay for city expenses. Did, that, did I read that right? <laughs> you know, I never heard uh, for sure about that Ottawa mayor, but I did listen to, uh, I listened to one of his announcements there. It was my first time uh, hearing him and boy, he has some uh, some opinions, I tell you that much. He's, I thought Trudeau was something else, but he is one heck of a step above him yet. He is definitely not worth listening to for us here. It's, uh, you know, and uh, another thing we should mention with that is I'm so happy that they're still lying. I'm so happy that they haven't backed down on the lies. They've doubled down yep. because it is so apparent for everyone paying attention. It is so apparent for everyone standing around here. It is undeniable, and it's... Uh, it's, it's, it's awesome that they're still lying about it. So let's, intru- let's encourage them to keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that is, but, um, <laughs> that's right. That's right. It, it, it's funny you should say that because I didn't want to cut you off, but it's, it, it's, I noticed that the, it, it seems like the more people start paying attention to what's going on and the more people start standing up and saying, hey, wait a minute, this is not acceptable, um, and the more these lies that they trot out, not just about you guys, because I, I know that they started lying about you guys real quick, but... Just in general, um, it's 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 really true. The less credible they become, because the more obvious it is. Yeah, and it is it is couldn't be more obvious out here. Like this is this is plain truth, man. And to go back to that GoFundMe, um, I know it's been shut down a couple times, put on pause, and all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure what the current status is of it, but I'll tell you what: the truckers out here, it's kind of the last of our worries. You know, yeah. this is uh, way beyond the money. This is way beyond the expense. This is way beyond our jobs. A lot of people, 
Um, they were just not planning on hopping in the convoy and uh, joining up for a day or two, right? Mm-hmm. While they're they're here, their brakes are on and they are not moving. So uh, it's pretty hard not to get get in touch with the energy here and yeah. get uh, get sucked into what's truly right here. So yeah, yeah the GoFundMe. Um, I haven't been really encur- dis- encouraging or discouraging people to get involved with that. It's obviously a good thing. But um, I think maybe showing your support and spreading the truth is more important for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's one of the reasons we, we decided to, to kind of spin this thing up because I just got, um, well, you know, it's funny, man. I grew up, I came up in the 70s, right? And, uh, and my dad was- uh, You're you know, old, bro. <laughs> oh, you sound young over the phone, but you, you sound ancient almost, man. <laughs> that's the, man, that, that's the whiskey, man. <laughs> it keeps me young. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, <laughs> my dad, right? My dad uh, worked in the construction trades, you know. So I grew up in in, in a union, working class household, and yeah. like a lot of kids growing up yeah. in the seventies, you know, we had this romance, this love affair with trucks, you know, eighteen wheelers, and you know, like like a lot of boys, you know, you'd go and you build models of trucks and things like that. It was it was a big deal. And I remember, you know, yeah. I remember when Convoy was a big single on the radio and. You know, I remember when every now and then, you know, 18 wheels yeah. would, would come through town or we'd be on a road trip going somewhere. And it was like, oh, look at that 18 wheel. Look at that big rig. And um, so there was a real there, there was a real kind of I always had this kind of romance. I think a lot of guys who came up like I did had that romance. And then and then having lived through the past couple of years and having seen what these people got away with in terms of lying. Um, you know, and in terms of pushing the agenda of their friends in big business, right? And th- and then seeing yeah. you guys, seeing that convoy, you know, I mean, a lot of a lot of me and a lot of my people, man, it's just it 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 was it, it was something to see, you know. So so when it started lying about you guys. Like I got really pissed off, and I didn't know what I could do, right? Because I'm I'm down here in New York, you know, and and I said, well, you know something? I'm hearing a lot from your prime minister. I'm hearing a lot from his political hacks. I'm hearing a lot from these mainstream news people. But we could hear more from the actual truckers, the guys who were in there, the guys who were in the convoy, and the guys who were who were doing uh, support services for him. So that's why we decided to spin this thing up. Yeah, copy that, man. That's that's what I'm here trying to do. Um, I I got a pretty cool head, pretty easy to talk to you guys so i'm trying to take on the responsibility of spreading the good message and and i love talking to guys like you and it's uh really helping us along here but i'll tell you um there's been it's been touch and go with uh the opinions on us right like yes. like always anything you stand for anything it's going to be controversial um you big movements everyone understands that but boy are we gaining traction now like mm-hmm. when i rolled in uh that would have been uh, friday when we rolled in, um, kind of went up on a on a hump for the weekend, came down, but I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. We are just going up fast. It's a Tuesday, and there is people all over, man. And I'll tell you what, the energy hasn't changed. The energy hasn't changed. It's just oh, I can't put it. I can't uh, put it into perspective over the podcast. But I, I, uh, I'm a just a small town kid there from. Uh, Saskatchewan and I would have always all that talk about energy and vibes and stuff you know I always would have said that's voodoo magic BS to me eh? but <laughs> it's uh, pretty pretty much impossible to uh, deny that now yeah I'm kind of uh, thinking myself as as a crazy person almost it's uh, no it's undeniable it's really eye opening and uh, it's uh, really powerful yeah that's and for, for one of the videos I saw I'm going to get I'm going to get directly to some of the lies people are telling about you and how they're trying to paint uh, the convoy in a negative light uh, because of how scared they are. But I want to I wanted to just touch on uh, I saw some videos that looked to me like the uh, uh, like the First Nations uh, brothers and sisters up in Canada came out really strong in support of the convoy. Yeah, I can't stress that enough, man. Oh, I can't stress that enough. And uh Sorry to say, but I was really surprised because I know some uh, reserves they put in. You know, they protected themselves. They were they were told to think a certain way and they reacted a certain way, and I can respect that, right? But they really locked themselves down and you know limited themselves. So I was so surprised to see that. Um, yeah, the First Native First Nations representation has been off the charts. I'm talking like Sault Ste. Marie was a big one we rolled through. 
Um, and wow, it's just, I've never been, you know, in a teepee before. And it was my first time a couple of days ago, even getting smudged all over the place. And it's just been awesome. Just the diversity I've been exposed to. I've been limited in not just where I am. Right. And yeah. I, I guess I haven't seeked it out too much either. Right. But, um, the, the diversity has been phenomenal and yeah, that's a great thing to keep spreading is, uh, first nations have been just supporting us like like you wouldn't believe all sorts of different race colors creeds man it is it is it's not even a question it's unbelievable that's beautiful that's beautiful yeah so let, let's dig down into that because you know the first thing um you know the 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 thing that i uh twig to right away and and this is something that I've noticed over the past few years, even before the big COVID freakout, is that uh, you know race is a thing that these elites like to bring up, not because they particularly care about people of any color, but because they're they're eager to create a distraction. And I'm saying that as a black guy, you know, I grew up in New York City, you know, I had to experience plenty of, you know, racism and this and that, growing up, what have you, learning to fight, you know, in my career, what have you, right? And be because because the world is the world, you know what I'm saying? And and people, and moral error is a thing that just exists in the world. But but I, I really, there was something that really ticked me off, man, when when they started to use that kind of slogan like oh it's all a bunch of white supremacists it's a bunch of racists as if they're going to say that magic word you know and and we're going to stop actually looking and listening and 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 thinking about what you guys are doing you know can, can you talk about how that impacted you oh man uh you know what to be honest man it didn't really rattle the guys around here too much uh, there's just such a strong unity yeah. with us guys here and there's such a we know we know what's right and we know what this is yeah. and um that talk of white supremacy and stuff obviously not appreciated yeah. <laughs> i can, do, I can yeah. do without it but uh but it didn't rattle us too much man it uh it everyone's got such cool heads here man i can't explain it everyone is yeah. everyone's so united and everyone's so kosher it's like even when Trudeau, you know, he's, you know, he's all of his lies and stuff like that. But it's, it's not even touching us out here. Like I, I get it, I get it, ticking guys off, you know, but not near as much as it uh, could be. It's, yeah. it's kind yeah. of a joke, you know. Yeah. We, we we have our own strength here, and uh, words words are words are cheap. Talk is cheap, so it's far from reality. Definitely, man. Like yeah, like there is all different kinds of truck drivers here, man. I'll tell you what, it's actually funny. I seen a a quick video of um, a guy holding a poster, you know, white supremacy, whatever. And there's uh, Pakistan standing beside him, you know, like waving his flag. <laughs> he came in a semi and he's parked down here, right? It's it's just beautiful. Oh man, that's really cool. Yeah, um, yeah. This this is uh, this is the kind of thing. Uh, you know, when when I when I sit in circles and talk with my people about this. Uh, in the Foundation Society and, you know, my online circles, uh, you know, one of the things we always talk about is that this is the kind of thing that these guys are really scared of, that, that the professional left is really scared of, right? Because my own little half-ass theory is that they are going to pay just enough lip service to work in people to where they think they can get get the traction they need politically. But when it comes time to really listen to the concerns of working people, when it comes time to say, okay, I understand you have concerns, let's talk about it. These guys are nowhere. It was really telling that Trudeau, in, instead of being a man, instead of manning up and saying, I'm gonna talk to these truckers because these guys are Canadians and I'm the leader of my country, of Canada. He basically said, I'm not gonna talk to anyone if I don't agree with them. And that's extraordinary. <laughs> that's like, yeah, you know. absolutely, man, absolutely. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely his opinion. Definitely ran from it. And uh, I, I just don't understand how, you know, I don't know who's voting for these guys. And even if you are voting for them, I can't see, uh, can't see how it's all falling apart faster and faster, right? Yeah. So I, I hope people are willing to. You know, maybe they're caught up in their family voting a certain way or, you know, whatever. Yes. Um, but, uh, but uh, sorry, I just got to shake this guy's hand. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Sorry, man. I've been trying to, I've been trying to slip, 
Real deep. Oh no, I might have ignited something here. Yeah. I'm trying to slip back real deep into my into my truck, and uh, and now I've been spotted. Hi. Uh, yeah, I love one, sir. Sorry, man. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Yeah, I can't. I can't. That's cool. Can't bro. explain it. Thank you. Oh man. Thank that's... you. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna lean back down here and yeah. I almost got to try to hide from these fine people <laughs> to have a break here from this podcast. But yeah, I, I can't. Well, yeah, I'm just uh, really trying to try to put this in perspective for you guys. But yeah. you just uh, you keep asking me questions, man. I'll do my best. Yeah. So uh, in the convoy, uh, I want to switch gears and talk about the convoy itself. I mean. Of course, you've got semis, right? You've, you've got 18-wheelers, but you've also got other vehicles that are, are rolling with you guys that aren't necessarily tractor trailers. Is that correct? Oh, God, yeah. No, there's, there was 10 to 1, I'm sure. Like, there's a big row of semis, that's for sure, but mm -hmm. there's a way larger roll of cars and trucks behind. Okay. It'd be uh, 10 to 1 for cars to semis, definitely. Okay, interesting. So, you know, when people talk about there being, yeah. you know, 50,000 truckers, that, that's it. I noticed that there was, there was that, that kind of thing that happens online where they were trying to debunk things and say, oh, it's nowhere near that many trucks because this and that. It's like, well, wait a minute. We're talking about 50,000 truckers now. Not all of them are going to be driving their rigs. Um, so that yes. that's interesting. Um, yeah, lots of... Yeah, tell me, tell yeah, me. Yeah, no, for sure. Lots of retired guys and stuff like that. And yeah. I, I, I'm not going to throw a number out there because, um, yeah, we don't know for sure. I can't confirm that. Right. But uh, I know I know there's millions of people around here, that's for sure. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I noticed in the run-up to you guys arriving in Ottawa, there were people lining the highways in some places, uh, people on, on bridge overpasses. And it was it was pretty cold up there, you know, but, but guys were coming out, families were coming out, waiting in the cold just to wave to you guys as you, as you roll past. Um, and then, oh, and then. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. Sorry. I don't mean to cut you no, off. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. I've been trying to, trying to really spread that message. Oh, the amount of people on the side of the road and it was minus 30 on my gauges. That's so what plus I'm the wind chill outside. <laughs> right. Man, like it was like, we're talking with wind chill minus 40 and I'm not kidding. There's so like we were behind hours, right? So there was lots of people who showed up and, you know, may, they might've hunkered in the car for a bit, but the convoy was a couple hours long. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I was at the back of the convoy a fair amount. Mm hmm. And when I roll by, when I roll by in the back of the convoy two hours later, there's still, still people, people there. like spinning, jumping, you know, cheering, hollering. They're not quitting. There's little kids in snowsuits so damn thick that their arms are sticking straight out to the side, <laughs> and they can't move. You know, can't see their face. Uh, a couple couple times, you see you see some old dogs, some old gals. They got big Canadian flags. They're holding on, and that's pretty much all they can do. They're they're ready to blow the hell away, man. Like. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, people were, were willing to pretty much do anything to show their support. I'm right, telling right. you. I mean, that's that that you know when I when I saw again looking at these uh, mainstream media narratives and looking at the word coming out of your own government about how this is a this is a what do they call it? what do you call it a uh, 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 fringe minority a uh, fringe minority <laughs> i'm like listen man people don't stand out <laughs> for hours in that kind of weather for any kind of fringe minority anything okay Th that's that's how i knew when I, when i saw the people by the side of the road in all these different places I'd, I'd barely even heard of you know medicine hat comes out to greet the truckers yeah. so i was like okay listen yeah. this is this is this is for real you know this is not this is not yeah. some fringe thing no i i you know and I, and I did i i did almost feel i did almost feel you know for the past two years like uh you know they almost had me tricked into thinking i was a fringe minority right and yeah. um so to see that, that really unlocked people's hearts, that really brought hope and yeah. really settled, it really, really settled me in. Like it really allowed me to take a deep breath and finally relax and and take a step back for a minute, you know, really feel, real feel like part of the family again, yeah. part of, as Canada being united, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, it, it's funny, one thing I'm always saying to people 
it, because as you can imagine, you know, various parts of the world. I mean, I have a lot of people in my network, in the Foundationist Network, uh, who are from the UK. In some ways, it's worse in the UK than it is here in the US. Um, well, I mean, I think in some ways it's been worse in Canada than it has been in the U.S. Uh, but, you know, one thing that I'm always telling people is that, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the enemy, out, uh, you know, we outnumber them. The people who are making policy, who decide to close down schools with the stroke of a pen, who decide to close down churches with the stroke of a pen, who decide to eliminate people's jobs, people's livelihoods, and 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 prevent them from feeding their families with the stroke of a pen who who have sentenced old people to die alone without their loved ones around them with the stroke of a pen these this is this is that is actually the fringe minority there's a very small number of those guys and the fact is they can give a lot of orders and they can write a lot of laws and do that, but the yeah. fact is they need us they need people the, the you know we the people we're the ones who write software and and patch the infrastructure and 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 wake up at 4 a.m. to 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 uh to to um to to fix roads and go out on oil rigs and drive trucks across uh, uh North America yeah. or, or across Canada wherever uh you know to to to, to bring good into stores so people can live. It's like they need us to do that. And, and nothing really goes down unless we say, okay. And, and I, I figured out that their number one weapon against us is despair. You see what I'm saying? Like the number one weapon against us is making us feel like, oh, you're just a last holdout. You're all on your own. Yeah, that's, that's no, that's right, man. You're totally right. They're, uh, there's definitely wicked evil out there, and unfortunately, so, there's uh, a lot of a lot of money and a lot of um, st strategy that goes into making good people like me and you feel a certain way to get a certain reaction. You know what I mean? Like yes, I, we can't, I can't start to, I can't start to uh, think that I, I, I understand how it works mm -hmm. or how far it goes. Yeah. But I know everyone has an inherent understanding of right and wrong, and when you when you got that wrong, it's something you gotta stick with. You gotta ignore what you're being told sometimes a little bit. You gotta you gotta trust your gut and, and your right and wrong feeling because uh, spiritually we're a lot smarter than that. Yeah. You gotta trust that. Yeah, I, I think that's right. You know, and speaking of what you know, you, you've 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 said that specifically that phrase right and wrong a few times now. And what's interesting to me is that. Thank you very much. Uh, you got more people <laughs> giving you giving you love. That's that's beautiful. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to hide. They can just see the tip of my hat here. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, but no, you know, it's it's uh, one one thing I really like about this convoy, about this movement, is just how simple it is. You know, it's very simple. Listen, the, in other words, what you're what you're basically saying is, don't want to put words in your mouth, but what, what you seem to be saying is, look, the answer is no. And that's it, <laughs> you know. That's it. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's right, man. We're right? drawing. We're drawing a line here. Yeah. We're drawing a line here, and it's time to hold that line. That's right. Um, and that, that enough is enough, man. Yeah. Yeah. What? Um, I'm trying to think about. You know. Uh, well. Yeah. I want to give you. I mean, I, I spun up this whole thing. You know, t to give you guys a chance to 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 say whatever was on your mind in, in terms of like what you wanted Americans to hear. Um, I mean, I'm not claiming yeah. to have any big, uh, any yeah. huge audience because I don't, <laughs> but you know, what, what, you know, what, what would you like us to, to hear from, from, from you truckers down here in the U S definitely. Um, first of all, the U S has been, has been always been the freedom, you know, capital of the world. Right. So thank you for that. But I think that, Everyone has inherited inherited a responsibility to do what's right, even when it's uncomfortable, even when you're disagreed upon or looked at a certain way, or even when you know you're coerced into feeling like a fringe minority for well two years. Yeah. Everyone has a responsibility. We've all inherited this, and we have to stick to our guns when it gets uncomfortable. That's when it really counts, guys. When it's when it's, you know, dealing with your job and stuff like that and taking losses, that's when upholding our values is more important than anything. So I just want to encourage everyone to to really stand up for what's right, even when it gets hard. That's right. You know, it's um, 
that point of temptation, it always seems to come in a point where it, it, it seems like it doesn't take very much. It wouldn't take very much to just go along. And, and, and that, that even that the way it's framed sometimes is, is a temptation in itself, right? Because on the one side you have, everyone's going to talk shit about you. Um, you might lose your job. Uh, you might, you know, y- your friends might be alienated, this and that, right? And on the flip side, it's like, well, it's just a shot. <laughs> you know, it's just a, it's just a right. whatever. And it's like, you know, it, it's just, is, you know, it's just is yeah. uh, I've come to really hate that 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 phrase because it's always yeah. just a little something, isn't it? It's always just a little something. No, that's right. I, I, I it's, tough, it's tough to put into words what you're what you're saying. I've, I've been struggling with trying to put that together as well. It's uh, yeah, it is. It's easy to to lean on oh i just trusted the science you know and ignoring what's right and wrong oh i just i trusted what i was told it's it's easy to to offload that responsibility and offload and say oh i just i had to feed my family there's a lot of people here and to to a point i understand but guys you you have to push and get uncomfortable for to hold proper values and there's a lot of people here who lost a lot when they could have just agreed yeah that that's that that's sure. that that's a, a a point that we can't stress enough right in that you know it, it's not like you guys uh it, it's not like you could have looked at the political landscape and thought oh yeah i'm going to make a lot of friends for myself by going against what everyone what what most people seem to be going along with do you know what i'm saying like in other words, y- y'all had to know that the government would be gunning for you. Y'all had to know that that, that your, your your prime minister and and all his hacks would be gunning for you, um, and you did it anyway. And I think I think that says something. Um, I, I think it says something good about you guys. I wanted to touch on 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 one more thing, which is that when I read uh, things from my Twitter feed about uh about the convoy um you know i'm always looking for positive things to post and you know images and videos and what have you uh but but of course you can't you can't um you can't get away from reading the negative stuff and what i've noticed is, is a couple things it's like the, when people say the, the negative things people say about you it goes beyond just a, a difference of opinion and i was having an argument on twitter with someone who blocked me because you know, he was a pussy. That's how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> and and he was, you know, and I was trying to explain to this guy that science is not a set of answers, right? It's like, yeah, of course, you know, we're people of the modern world. You know, you you drive a big rig, right? You you know, you use internal combustion engine, right? There's all kinds of science that enables you to just do your job, but science is not a set of answers. Mm. Science is a way of asking questions, right? And so, and this guy came back with right. something like, well, maybe the truckers have all the answers. And that that really pissed me off because it seems to me, and I want you to talk to this, it seems to me that you all are not, you all are coming from certainty about right and wrong, but you're not coming from a place of, I know what's best for everybody. You guys are not saying that. You're not saying, you, you know, in other words, you guys don't have a public health platform. What you're saying is, listen, the certain things have to be a personal choice. There are certain things that is simply wrong. In other words, you know, I, I am a human being and, 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 and human being, you must not interfere with a human being in a certain way. In other words, you're coming from uh, kind of humility, doubt, and, and, and a sense of the sacred. Can you talk to that for a bit? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm a very, I'm, I know what's right and wrong and, and it's, I'm going to commit to that no matter what, but I'm also fairly reasonable yes. you know for the last two years i've been i've been going to sleep every night thinking you know how can you know, here's here's a good way to put it mm. if you meet 10 assholes a day <laughs> then you're an asshole <laughs> but if you meet right? right if you meet if you meet one asshole a day then he's an asshole <laughs> right so Maybe I'm the asshole because I'm meeting 10 guys telling me I'm wrong yeah. and one guy telling me I'm right. Yeah. So I've been doubting myself and, you know, going through, going through my thought process. Yes, sir. 
every night before bed for two years, whatever, right? You know, yeah. nobody here thinks that they are they are the smartest person or that they are, yes. you know, an immunologist um, career. Nobody's nobody's thinking that. Nobody. Yeah. Very, very few people are 100% stuck in, in a set of beliefs, but we are 100% committed to, like you said, right and wrong. We yeah. know that this is wrong, yes. regardless of what we're told. We That's know this feels wrong, and we know that, that this is a dark path, and we're not going to stop fighting for that, but I'm glad you brought that up. Nobody here thinks that they are the smartest medical professional in, you know, in the world yeah. or anywhere. They, they just, they just trying to uphold rights and freedoms for everybody in future generations. Man. Well, that's right. And, you know, I won't even, I won't dignify his name, but, you know, we got cats running around Washington saying that they are science. And then when you, and, and when you attack them, you attack science. And, you know, again, the, yeah. it's, it's, it's the, there's a, whatever people feel about that particular individual, you know, the thing I want to get at is, is that we all of us have to come to this thing with a sense of doubt, with a sense of self-doubt. I don't trust anyone who is who is overly certain about things right. that, that, that you can't be 100 percent certain about, you know, and, and that that's one. I mean, I, you know, I've been this is me and a few people in my circle. We, we've been looking at this thing from the beginning. And and, you know, there were a few skeptical voices and we took a lot of abuse, not not as much as some other people. Uh, but, you know, we, we gave as good as we got, but we, we didn't like how certain people were about things. And in my career, you know, I'm a software developer and I work the kind of work I do. I work with analysts. I work with clinicians. I work with epidemiologists. I work with cats who are actually in, 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 the, in the game in that way. And the good ones always are careful to express uncertainty and they're always careful to be honest about what they're uncertain about. And this thing, I think this thing began to look really sour for a lot of people. When all the people talking to us were very, very, very certain. And they were so certain they didn't want anyone to talk about doubts. That's, you know, to me, it's, it's like, it's one thing if you say uh, it's 60, 40, it's 80, 20, it's 99, one granted. Okay. But when you're saying I can't ask questions, you're up to something. And, and we can say, I don't know what you're up to, but I want no part of it. And it seems to me that, that that's part of what, would you, would you say that's part of what, um, of, of how you guys uh, you know, think about this as well? Oh, absolutely. Just, yeah. uh, yeah, only being able to see one side of an argument, something that is so, you know, brand new and so different. Correct. And not being able to be exposed to opinions. <laughs> that uh, that sealed it for for a lot of people, man. Like, yeah. if we could have had things saying, you know, this is new, and you know, like we don't, we can't guarantee. You know, obviously, we can't guarantee guarantee anything with a brand new style of vaccine that's never been used on people, right? Like, we, if if we could add honest conversations like that, yeah, that would have settled a lot of people's minds and hearts. But when when you can't even, you know, find videos on on platforms that that can talk about reasonable doubt or yes. informed consent yes then then that just sealed it off for a lot of people saying you know what no i'm not i'm not even gonna i'm not gonna abide by this just because because of how it's it's been being portrayed and then the information being relayed is completely uh construed yeah so yeah no it's it's that that, that was a ceiling uh, a deal breaker for a lot of people yes, in sir. this uh, group and well, across the world, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm guessing also some of you, some of you guys are probably like me and that you're just ornery and like, you know something? If you, if you suggest something to me, I'll think about it. If you order me to do it, now I'm definitely not doing it. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing is like. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, um, I wanted to, I wanted to there's something else I wanted to touch on the whole Neil Young Spotify thing where you couldn't where where you weren't even supposed to have a doctor, a credentialed doctor asking reasonable questions about this vaccine. And that's supposed to be misinformation. Now, Neil Young is a guy who I mean, not that long ago, he came out with an album called The Monsanto Years. And you and I can probably both remember when, according to the left, 
according to a lot of the same people who are talking shit about you guys in the convoy now, according to those guys, Monsanto was the devil. You remember that? You remember no GMOs? Remember all those protests? Right. So oh, the, the, I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I do. Yeah. Right. So, so, so the thing I'm trying to get my head around is how is it that, you know, not that long ago, five seconds ago in historical terms, right? You had these guys saying no GMOs, Monsanto's, that are, but all of a sudden Pfizer, which is the same kind of huge, wealthy, multi-billion dollar, multinational company. It, they, they're, they're all on board with them injecting something into you that will make you a GMO. Now, I know that you, you know, we're not specifically talking about Neil Young and his book, but, you know, what, what I mean, as a, as a Canadian, man, what, what did you, how did that strike yeah. you when Neil Young came out like that? Yeah, I'm going to hammer down on, uh, on what you're saying, what you're saying there about um, them changing their tune. It was the same thing with uh, My Body, My Choice. Yeah, right. These are the same people, my same body, people. my choice, Correct. forever and ever. Correct. And now, and now it's no longer my body, my choice. Now it's collective. Now I have to do things because you feel like they'll make you safer. Right. Hold right. on a second. Right. You, yeah, you guys, you know, you're not stuck in values. It's whatever works for you at the time. You change your tune on a click of a switch. Right. So it's. So now what? So now what? Are they going to go back to my body, my choice? That, that I guess their slogan thrown out for that. Like that's uh, it's hard to use that. Up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't that's... know. Everything, everything they stand for, it just swing. It swings to their direction as soon as they want it to. And it's yeah, we see a lot. Of, we see a lot of signs actually. You know, maybe that's where all those signs came from. All the left. Uh, <laughs> They donated their signs to us. All our my body, my choice, pro choice, and they're they're here. <laughs> Thanks to that, guys. That's awesome. That's like yeah, exactly, man. They did you real solid, man. <laughs> you know, no, but that's that's the thing I'm always thinking about. Like, um, well, you know, again, after the last couple of years, after this viral freakout, and after I saw people change, you know, turn their coat and, like you said, change their tune. Now, I don't want to hear nothing. It's like, no, 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 no. I know where you were on this question, on the, on the real question of bodily autonomy. And it strikes me that what, what's interesting is um, you, you, you mentioned, you alluded to something earlier about people being, able, being willing to put it on the line. And it strikes me that, um, that a lot of the people who, who, who said that stuff, who were always talking that thing about freedom, uh, it seemed to me that that was it was never really about freedom for them. It was always about self indulgence. It was like I want the freedom to indulge mm-hmm. myself, but it wasn't the kind of a it wasn't mm-hmm. the freedom. You know, when you when you when I hear you guys, you know, when when I see you know uh, uh, truckers make videos or whatever, you know, guys from the convoy. When I hear you talking about freedom, I get the sense that it's coming from a rooted place. I get the sense that, you're, that, that again you you're saying this word, but you're talking about something that's sacred. And I don't get the sense that anything was ever really sacred to that other crowd, which is why they could turn their coats so quickly. Yeah, that's right. No, they're not deep rooted in, in uh, values, right? It's, yeah. it's all about uh, what they want at the time. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. People, people have, uh, people in this group definitely have deep rooted values. Man. It's, there's no question about that. Yeah. yeah. This ain't changing. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, I've, I've, I've said, um, I've said before, you know, I, you, of course, I'm not going to you, you don't have to uh, feel any questions about religion or anything. But I've said I've said before that um, this yeah. war we're in and I do think it's a war. Um, it, it's bigger than it's bigger than COVID. It's bigger than the vaccine. Um, but I think uh, I've yeah. said before that I think this war we're in, we're, we're not going to win this without uh, a return to something other than just blind materialism. We're going to have to get back to our roots, part of which is our religious roots. It's just, and that, yeah. that's not to say everyone has to believe X. It's just to say that everyone has to have values that come from a deeper place than here's what I want for myself right now. Do you see what I'm saying? Like religion in that sense, like, like totally, something that's in touch with the sacred, yeah? Yeah, totally understand. No, we got to get back to... Uh, family values, man. We've yes, had sir. huge attacks on family values, have family structure, and that is, it's it's more than apparent, you know. Keeping it's more than obvious, I should say. Yeah. Uh, to keep that family structure, keep uh, 
the mom and the dad and the strong family and it's just how it's how humans have existed for forever ever. yeah and to think that we can just walk away from family is uh is so foolish we need a, we need male role we need female role we need that's right we need both sides of that you guys like yeah anyone can can keep a kid alive but i think the problem to really really give someone the best chance they need uh we need both sides of that and the religious thing i totally agree with too i'm not i was not raised in a crazy um overly religious family you know religious values but but that's something that i think i've been longing for and i've been trying to get in tune with and i'm definitely going to step it up after this is we got to get into a set of values here and um, a real set of beliefs and um, a bit of a settlement as well knowing that right will come and that uh, light will shine through um, that's right. not to be ignorant that uh that we can just um sink our way through everything right like we're gonna have to have faith that's right that's right um and and it's interesting because people it's it's become fashionable in in a lot of circles especially a lot of liberal circles to say that faith is just What's the big deal about faith? Faith is just believing in something you haven't seen yet. What's the big deal? But the fact is everyone, you know, it, you, you can't have education without faith, right? You, you're asking kids to yeah. go to school and to have faith that by applying themselves and, and, and doing things well and properly now, they're going to have better lives in the future. They have to believe something they haven't seen. You know, and and you, you don't get yeah. you don't get, you don't get, you don't get the, the kind of optimism in a society that you need just to build things, right? It's like the, the building something is an act of faith. You don't know for a fact how it's going to turn out. You know, in every everything yeah. we do, every optimistic thing we do, every, every kind of life affirming thing we do, that that's an that's an expression of faith. We've been listening to too many people who just think they can do away with certain things, certain parts of the foundation because they're inconvenient. They don't know where things come from, how society works, how civilization works. They, have, they, they seem not to know where their food comes from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they, they're willing to, they're yeah. willing to do away with things that, that you can't do away with that are essential, you know? So. No, absolutely. And I'll speak to that a little bit just as yeah. a younger guy, 24-year-old guy. Um, that family structure thing, I want to just hammer down on that because... Yeah. Every time I open my phone, it's, I'm basically watching softcore porn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every time, it's just it's just pulling us away from that always with temptation and and uh, this empty happiness, man. Yeah. So we need to. Thank you. You're welcome. We need to. Thank you. We need to. Uh, we need to steer away from that. I don't know how because I uh, quit watching porn um, a year or two ago, right? And yeah. just just waking up to this stuff. Yeah. And um, I don't know how we're going to do it because I'm not on TikTok, right? I'm yeah. still on Facebook, some social media, try not to engage, whatever. But I, even I can't get away from it. Anytime you're interacting at all in the digital world, which is, which is almost unavoidable at this point, you're just being exposed to temptation, especially in uh, sexuality. And that's, uh, it's so hard on us, especially as young guys, man, where yeah. we, we got to... We got to get away from that, man. We got to pull that off and start. Cause I, I'm choosing not to be exposed to it, but it's impossible. It's 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 being pushed on me so hard, right? It's, yeah, yeah. And so we get, that's how we're, we if we're gonna get our uh, family structure back, we, that that stuff needs to end. We need we need choice in that. Man. Well, well, that's correct. That's correct. And I, you know, so I, I I talk to a lot of young guys, and and you know what I'm always telling them is is that, that youthful energy you have, whether it's whether it's you know wanting to chase girls or wanted to wrestle and tussle and fight or whatever, that, that kind of the warrior spirit, that's a good energy, but it has a right purpose. You see what I'm saying? It, it's not that it's evil. It's not that it's bad. It's that it has a right purpose. That's the thing that my Christian friends um, are often, it, it seems like people purposely misunderstand them when they talk about this kind of thing. That's the big lie that they always tell about my Christian friends is, is that they're that they're anti-sex or they're anti-this, anti -this. It's like, no, things have a right purpose. And you can use a good thing for a wrong purpose. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, brother. It's like, I'm not, I don't claim to have all the answers about how, how we get out of this thing, but we agree that this is a problem. And it's also a problem, by the way, because the same enemy, the same people who want to use our children for medical experiments, they understand that, that um, if they can, if they can, uh, uh, 
manipulate us with our love of pleasure, for example, then they've got us, you know. And again, it's not that pleasure is a bad thing. It's like is someone is someone using that that love of pleasure as a weapon against you or as, as an instrument to control you or to distract you, you know, so you got to get your mind right on that. So, yeah, I agree with you. For sure. Unfortunately, yeah, there there is bad out there and there's a lot of money around that and there's a lot of very, very smart, very, very um, tactical, collected organizations um, working to subconsciously steer us in a certain direction, right, for, yes, for money and greed and all the wrong things. Yeah. So that's where we got it. We got to have faith, hold that faith, and and you just have to trust what's right and wrong, man. There's there's definitely people against us, but uh, if if uh, if everybody works together on this, we're gonna shine through. It's gonna be all good. Got to, got to, because again, we outnumber them by far. You know, the people who know how to do real work, <laughs> you know, outnumber yeah. the the, the yeah. Davos men and the money men and the the great resetters yeah. and all these cats. It's like I'm I'm not even you know, to them. It's right. like to, to me. Uh, they're they're almost irrelevant once we get our act together, you know, as brothers and sisters. And that's why, yeah, and that's why I go back to what I said before. These guys are terrified. They're terrified that a black dude from New York is gonna get on the horn with a white brother from Saskatchewan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And just and just hey, talk. Hey man, and, you, you know, know I was white dude. Too. You know I said. <laughs> You know I was waiting for the phone, eh? Can, can you tell? Can you tell I got red beard too? <laughs> Listen, you said you got a red beard, right? Yeah, I'm not racist except against gingers. Yo, the worst. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm only halfway there. I'm only halfway there. Oh, My now you're back. Brown, oh, all right? oh, now you back it off. Now you only have yeah. ginger. Yeah, we we're gonna see about that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Listen, brother. So I want to round out. Um, uh, but by, by giving you a chance to you know say anything else you want to say, get whatever word out you want to get out, give shout outs or thanks to whoever. Um, whether it's in, in, in the convoy, um, in all your support crews, what have you, just give you the last word to say, say whatever, whatever it is, uh, that you want to say. Oh, there's endless, there's endless people, the organizers, my family, everybody. I don't have enough time to, to name them off. I want to give thanks to everybody who's willing to stand up for what's right and is willing to, to have disagreeable conversations and put their foot down. I want to give thanks to everyone. I want to give thanks to people listening and taking in a different point of view. Everybody has an inherited responsibility to stand up against what's right and wrong, you guys, even when it's hard to do, even when your job might be at risk, and even when things are tough. That's when it really counts. Everyone needs to band together on, uh, and have open faith and um, keep up the good work. It's just been phenomenal. It, and to me, it almost feels like there's been a big buildup, you know, and it was in the back of my mind. I was having faith on it, man. Like two years of disagreeableness two years of you know shaking my head at what's going on man but just keeping that keeping that faith and there's a big build-up into something that was was gonna you know was gonna come back was gonna come back and a day into my trip it all came back man like it's all been settled and I'm, I'm so much at peace you know i can i can sit back here i can have the coolest conversation and i'm so at peace right now it's unbelievable anybody who doubts um uh, spirituality and uh, stuff like that like i may have yeah get that out of your head man because it's it's reality it's it's never been more obvious so yeah i just i really want to encourage you guys to uh, be able to be disagreeable and be able to really put your foot down even when it's really hard because like you said man there's a lot there's lots lots of people like us and we got your back we're willing to do anything i'm willing to sit on this street corner um for weeks for whatever it takes you know there's guys here who say they just got to make it for seating which is in a couple months so uh we got your back we're we're strong group well thank you brother um again we're down here you know we're going to do whatever we can to help you all uh you know by getting the word out and and show, showing the world a, you know a, a different side uh the, the side that uh that our so-called betters um in government and media would rather people didn't see um we're going to show it, you know, and we're going to keep uh, we're going to keep doing it, you know, because because what you guys are doing is important. Like this is as real as it gets. We're playing for all the marbles here. So I want to thank you uh, on behalf of 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 all my peoples everywhere 
uh, because everyone in my circles, I mean, everyone's inspired by this. Everyone's kind of got their spirits picked up by this. Everyone is looking at this like, man, this is the, this is the thing we've been hoping would happen. We've been praying would happen. Um, and and it's, it's going to be, you know, you all might never know. Um, what you what you did for people's spirits just just by doing this just by taking these risks that you did um and just by putting yourself out there so thank you oh you're welcome uh, thanks for your time man my name's back my name's spencer Bout. but my handle my handle's pretty boy so if uh, anyone wants to get at me go ahead and, and do it all we keep doing what we're doing out here man it's it's good and uh yeah thanks for the interview thanks for your time and keep having faith out there